Welcome back to Talking Ball, brought to you by HP Polly. I'm Nicola Hume. Now, on this podcast, I'm allowed to travel to Milton Keynes, to the Oracle Red Bull Racing Factory, where I kind of have a little mooch around the corridors to see who I find. And I just happen to have bumped into some very cool people today. So, I am joined by Sergio Checo Perez and his race engineer, Hugh Bird. Welcome. Thank you for being here. This is actually really cool to have you both together, because, I mean, Hugh, you don't normally do interviews like this, do you? Try and keep a low profile. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Checo, by all means, help him out. If you've got any yeah. advice when it comes to interviews, things like that, feel free to sort of give him the little tips and things like that. I look after him. <laughs> I, uh, I can see that he's a bit nervous, so Not my I, make sure, I make sure I look after him. How long have you two been working together then? Well, this is our, our third year now, so yeah, disappearing quickly. It's, yeah. yeah. Time flies by. Yeah. Are you yeah. are you friends sort of outside of racing as well? Like, do you have like a WhatsApp group and all that kind of thing and speak to each other often? Yeah, we've got the the car crew WhatsApp group. Uh, yeah, keep in touch fairly regularly. I mean, we see each other very much uh, more than uh, our wives. So, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a very loving relationship. Yeah, we have a lot of. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how many weekends a year we see, we get to see each other. So, yeah, we. we <laughs> and then in the factory we, between races. Yeah. Yeah. So I hear that you call Hugh Big Bird. <laughs> yeah, Big Bird, because that's his nickname in, in Mexico. Uh, it's how they call it, uh, which means, uh, yeah, Big Bird. <laughs> Pajarote. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because your surname's Bird and you're quite a tall guy, which you can't actually notice because you're mm. sat down, but you are a very tall guy. Yep, it has been noted. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to sort of um, dive back a bit into your time here at, at Red Bull. So on like an average day, I mean, you're here at the factory now, but how often are you here at the factory, Checo? Uh, a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, very much before every weekend uh, or after every weekend. And we do sim sessions uh, most of the time, debriefs and uh, also great uh, marketing activities uh, every now and then. Yeah, like today. Like today, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're doing the sim, sim so in between we, we do a bit of uh, marketing. Oh, it's so yeah. intense when we're at the track. It's really the only opportunities we get to, to properly sit down, debrief weekends, go into, mm. into the detail we need to, yeah. uh, analysing what's happened uh, and build going forward. Yeah. Do, you, do you do a lot of everything together? So like, say, if you have to go into a meeting, you will do it together or you kind of have to brief each other after each thing or is everything done as a partnership? Yeah, when you come into the factory, we're doing the sim session together and then I'll bring in other engineers. I yeah. think it's important that Checo touches base with and make sure that, you know, items with your installation or issues you're having with the car, balance with the how the car's performing, the relevant parties are, are briefed and uh, everyone's in, in the same loop. Yeah. So let's dive even further back. So I want to talk about when you first got into racing. So were you one of the little kids that jumped in a go-kart pretty much straight away? Um, yeah, pretty much. As soon as I had the opportunity, I, I went for it. Um, but I was uh, around five, six-year-old when I first started uh, when I first had a chance to jump into into a go kart, mm. but when even when you're five six years old, like it's quite fast racing, isn't it? For even like a little five year old, you're you're going quite fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, now my son is doing a bit of karting, and and you see the speeds they go through, you know. And like um, he cannot ride a bicycle yet, but he can <laughs> drive so fast a go kart. So um, yeah, it's quite impressive, you know, to to see that sort of. Uh, a speed that the, the kids start doing. That's what I was going to ask, if it was going to be something that's going to feed through down to your children, if you're going to get, yeah, your children into karting, but obviously it's happening. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's doing it just for fun. Um, for now, you know, it's, uh, l let's see, it's up to him what he wants to do. Um, but so far, he seems to, to enjoy it. But uh, also football, also golf, so all sort of sports. Which again are, are your favourite sports as well, right? Football and golf. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. So your favourite team is uh, America. Oh, okay, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah. So if you weren't if you weren't a driver, would you have gotten into football? Do you think? Uh, I'd love to, but I don't think I I was good enough ah. to, to succeed. <laughs> <laughs> so golf, I would probably say, is your perfect way of calming down, right? Uh, not really, because we are so competitive. You know that. Uh, 
we always want to do well, but obviously we, we have certain talent, you know, that uh, we gotta I know that. But uh, in golf, you know, it's such a mental game. Mm. It's a bit like our sport. But it, but it's so different. I mean, so different, you, yeah. I mean, as your career, you're driving 200 miles yeah. an hour and then to chill out, you're going for a nice, relaxing, a nice, relaxing game of golf, maybe a couple yeah. of sandwiches, you yeah. know, completely different things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way, especially the way we play it in Mexico, it's a little bit different because it's a little bit more chill, um, more fun with friends, with, uh, with mates, um, some tequila involved as well, so naturally, yeah, it's a little bit different. Of course, of course. I mean, as we're recording this, we are just coming off the the summer break as we're recording this. So, have there been some um, terrible food temptations? Because as a driver, weight is very important, making sure that you stick to the same weight. So, surely the summer break is a bit of a challenge, I, isn't it? I haven't discussed that with Hugh yet. Uh, <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah, we need to do some some we'll adjustments there. Yes. But other than that, um, all good. It was quite enjoyable. Um, yeah, obviously, it's you have like a bit of time to go up, but then back down. So um, the more you put in, the the more you have to to put it back out. Yeah, I mean, you see, you you're actually quite different in terms of things that you do outside of F1. Because I hear that you go kayaking. Is that right? Yeah, kayaking. Talk is to me a... about your kayaking. Well, I've done it for the last twenty plus years. Um, yeah, just I grew up by rivers, and that was the done thing. That was what all my friends did, and that's what how we spent our summers. Um, more recently, long distance marathon kayaking. Um, wow. What is tell that? Them, tell them about your preparation that you've done for the last yeah, six months. Yeah, so well, I was training for a race at Easter, the the DW Devizes to Westminster. So that's a a two hundred k race from Wiltshire, finishing opposite uh, Big Ben, and um, takes. Hopefully under 24 hours, uh, but not a given. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to take part. Um, the river conditions weren't uh, weren't particularly nice. Uh, I wasn't deemed experienced enough, or my crew wasn't deemed experienced enough. Um, but yeah, that's a it's an awesome race. I did it with my wife uh, four years ago in 27 hours, um, and you just flat out, yeah, go. See, this is what I mean by complete opposites, because, I mean, you're driving mega fast and then chilling out with golf. You're mostly sitting on comms, chatting to Checo during a race, and then you go out and go 27 mile kayaking or whatever you're doing. That's uh, <laughs> complete opposite people. But you seem to merge and work together really nicely. It seems to work quite nicely, right? Yeah. I mean, we have a, a very similar way of life. You know, we like through the stages, we're similar age um, and similar, um, how would you say, um, a style of life, you know, it's also uh, family men. Mm. Um, so we go through the same, same issues, same enjoyments and so on. So when it comes to, so like when you joined Red Bull, for example, was there someone higher up that went, actually, I think Hugh would be a really good person for you to work with and you kind of got paired up that way? Or did you meet a few different race engineers and then just figure out who you would bond with better? How does it work? The team... Uh, made the decision. Yeah. Um, I was working on Max's car at the time um, and the opportunity arose. I got promoted up into into this role just coincidentally at the same time as Checo was joining. Uh, so we were both sort of Checo arriving at the team, myself arriving in the role at, at the same time and growing into it uh, from there. So, I mean, there has been quite a, a few tricky moments for you this season so far. Uh, like in qualifying, for example, there's been a, a, a few tricky moments. How are you, how do you deal with that? And Hugh, how do you help him deal with those moments? We analyse it afterwards. We, we go through it. We discuss it extensively. What caused those, those challenging times? Um, if there's things which we can refine with the car, uh, approaches we're taking with how we're setting up the car, with how we're, we're operating the car at the track. Um, and always, whenever there's been something which hasn't gone our way, I uh, try and make sure we learn from it and limit the risk of that affecting us in the future. I mean, it, there have been there have been some really exciting moments this season, though. And now we're coming off the back of the summer break. How are you feeling about getting back on track? Yeah, good. I think definitely we needed the, that summer break, you know, because there, there are times where you are in a great moment and you don't you don't really want to stop. But now we felt like. Um, the last few races, I mean, the last two were were a lot better. Um, we we were on the podiums and so on. 
but uh, we had few tricky moments, like you said, you know, and in in qualifying, uh, it's tricky conditions, and and we haven't got the maximum. So I think now really feels good to to be back racing in these next ten races. Mm-hmm. Um, We've been working really hard to try to figure out uh, which direction we can take that can can work better for us, you know, because we obviously had a very strong start to the season. So uh, we want to get back to to that level and uh, we've been working on that. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a very strong start to the season, but now this sort of second half of the season will include your home race. So how does that feel the moment that you go back home and you have basically the whole of Mexico behind you, screaming your name, waving the flags. How does that feel the moment that you arrive at home? Ah, it feels great. You know, I'm, I think I'm very lucky um, to have that sort of support um, that very few drivers in the world get to experience, mm. you know, because it's, it's just tremendous. But um, it's still a lot of races to go. We take it race by race. So you've driven with a lot of other teams as well, but how does your time with Red Bull differ to other teams? Do they work differently? Yeah, obviously every team work very different and focus on very different aspects. And and the cars are very different as well. The way you drive, the way you look after the tires, um, how you brake. So there are a lot of things that when you come to a team, you just constantly learning from mm-hmm. them, you know, because it's, it's, although you're still in Formula One, it's a very different world. And uh, at Red Bull, uh, when I came, I, I found out that a lot of things were done differently. Um, but there's also a lot of fun, you know, um, a lot of pressure because we all have to deliver to our maximum. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it's it's about having good fun, good time and uh, enjoying the moment. Yeah. I mean, from from my perspective, you know, I've, I've never driven a car 200 mile an hour and that would frighten the life out of me so have you ever experienced driving a car that fast to kind of understand what Checo's body is going through what's going through in what's going on in his head have you ever experienced that no not at all and one of the peculiar things about my job is that quite often I'm telling Checo to do things slightly differently but with absolutely no experience of that firsthand yeah I present him with some data look you could be doing this try doing this it'll be a faster way to go around that corner but yeah, never experienced it, it for myself. <laughs> Would you want him to? I love to. I love to <laughs> to sit back and, uh, and tell him how to how to do it through the computer. They should do like one random race where they just get the the engineers, the race engineers driving the cars and the drivers controlling everything. I'd love I'd love to do that because uh, the driver is like fully on the limit, and then your race engineer will come and yeah. Just make it faster. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, it's so easy. Yeah. I'll just give you my laptop. And, uh... Yeah, exactly. That would be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, I don't know if you know this, but when you Google your name, it actually comes up King of the Street Circuit. Are you aware of that? No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, you are. You're very, very good at the street circuit, but it does make me wonder what your day-to-day driving is like, like when you're just driving your normal car. Do you ever get done for speeding? <laughs> uh, not really. Uh, very rarely because I always I hate paying penalties. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I already have to deal with my penalties here at Red Bull, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, and uh, on the streets, uh, no, I always chill out and I don't drive very fast. What is it with it? Like, there is, there is something that happens with you when you land on a street circuit and you drive on a street circuit. You seem to just completely come into your own and just feel so incredibly comfortable on these circuits that are so tight the corners are so tight what is it about that compared to a track that just makes you feel so comfortable we seem to like more the streets uh, just around it you know and, and we seem to get on better um on how the the car performs to to our side to our likeness and um i think yeah it's a bit to do with that mm. Do you two have like a, a secret language to communicate with each other that nobody understands apart from yourselves? Well, he's good at understanding my English, you know. <laughs> some people w- <laughs> wouldn't. So far, yeah. Some people wouldn't understand what I mean when I describe the car, but uh, he will understand what what I mean with it. That's what you think, but actually, I'm asking Woody in the background a lot. Of the so time. Woody is the one that understands. Yeah. Me. <laughs> you say something on the radio. Woody is a performance engineer. Right. Um, working with us. 
I got on the radio to him. Would he, did he catch that? Yeah, he just said that. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, you're always, come, come you're, back to you. you're always finding new things. So here on Talking Ball, we have something called Oracle Red Bull Racing's 100 Objects, which is where the guests come in and bring something that means something to them within their time here at Red Bull. I mean, we've had the Constructors Trophy. We've had something as simple as a laptop. Adrian Newey brought in his legendary red notebook, which was really awesome. So I can see you have some items here. Hugh, I'm going to start with you. What have you brought in? Yeah, so I've got um, one of our team photos from, this is actually 2021, so at the end of each season, uh, all the travelling personnel, uh, the engineers, the mechanics, um, marketing, catering, everyone who's part of the, the circus that comes with us, um, all line up and we, we take a photo, um, yeah, somewhere in the year. Um, in a way, it's a, a bit of a shame that it doesn't include the factory people because it's it's far beyond the people we see in these photos. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're always great mementos at the end of a year to remember the faces that, well, been on this journey with us. Yeah. Do you, ha- do you have that like framed at home? Well, I've got a big pile of them on my desk. They sort of accumulate yes. up, but they're always there. Ready. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. But right, we're going to add that into our pile of 100 objects. Checo, what have you brought in with you? I got my helmet for Singapore because it's where, where I'm going to do my 250 Grand Prix, which is, uh, yeah, pretty special because, I mean, to, to think back at, at those 250, it's a lot of years in, yeah. in the sport, you know? I, I mean, it goes pretty fast. And it's only when you see it, you realize that uh, the amount of races, the amount of... Uh, years you've been in, in in the sport. Are there any particular sort of, like, because there, there's pictures on there, aren't there? Yeah, there are some pictures of, of my good moments in, in the sport. Um, Is there like, any picture uh, that particularly stands out to you? Um, well, when I won in, in uh, Monaco, it's here. Um, my podium, first podium in Mexico. Oh, yeah. Really stands out. Uh, my first ever win in Formula One. Um, yeah, I think those are the, yeah, and, and then uh, at the back there are so many pictures, you know. Oh, yeah, in the, two, in the, two in the 250, pictures, yeah. there are a lot of pictures from my previous cars or, or most of my cars that I've been, that I've been driving. Um, I mean, it's something, it's something personal that it's, yeah. it's good to have, you know, and then in few years time, look at it. Yeah, so when so when you're done with each race, because every normally every helmet's probably a little bit different with every race, but with a special helmet like that, I'm guessing you'll have it will have pride of place somewhere at home, won't it? Oh yeah, it does certainly. Um, yeah, I take it home. I normally keep one or two, and, and uh, especially this one, you know, because it's it has a very nice meaning. Yeah. Do you have to have a, a couple of different ones of that version or do you just have the one helmet for the whole race weekend? No, no. we normally need to have two Yeah, because of uh, if, if it rains or something. Yeah, yeah, because then so. it'll be, it's a different visor, isn't it? Yeah. If, it if it's sunny or if it rains yeah. or, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But, but normally when you do a special editions, because it's always so much in a hurry, uh, it's only one. So if it rains or something, then you have to, to race with another helmet. Oh. Oh, so, no. Okay. Yeah, it has happened before. So we hope it has to be perfect weather for that helmet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what we exactly. Want. Well, in Singapore, we had rain last year, so oh. it's, I think it's the first yeah. time we had rain in about, I don't know how many years, but um, yeah, you never know with the weather. Oh, fingers crossed. And actually, um, well, we've given you a bonus object as well because it was quite a nice thing to bring in an object that meant something to the both of you. So we do have the Baku trophy here. So who would like to tell me a bit about how it felt to win this trophy as a pair, as a, as a team that day? I felt great. You know, it was a, a great race. Um, I was trying to fight with uh, Max and, uh, and it just felt like we were so much on the limit each other, uh, pushing each other so much. Uh, touched the walls a few times. Uh, turn 16, I think. Uh, you found out pretty early <laughs> about it. You didn't mess up to it. I came on the radio. <laughs> asked you what had happened. Yeah, it was quite a big hit. Uh, I touched the wall quite hard, and um, I was like trying to figure out that the car was fine before I would communicate to to Hugh again. And he was on the radio, so like, yeah, we saw about what happened in sixteen. So tell us from your side what happened. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it was um, a great day. Yeah, certainly. 
Again, king of the street circuits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's something about street circuits where you just seem to do so well. Hugh, how does that feel, seeing that trophy set there? Yeah, spectacular. Like, Baku, Checo's record there, and Checo's record with the team at Baku, it's been, well, second to none. He's, I think he's leading podiums in, in Baku, um, which, um, yeah, speaks testament for him on the streets. Um, always special special to win, but, yeah, to to win again in Baku, it's, it's spectacular. Now, we have got a whole load of questions that have come in um, from HP Polly's social media because they put up a post saying, has anyone got any questions? So we do have quite a lot. So we're going to start with question number one. That's on a video. Hey, Sheko. Maxwell here living in Dubai. And I wanted to ask you, excluding Monaco, what is the most challenging track on the calendar this year? And also, whilst we're here, what is your favourite tequila-based cocktail? Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll do the track question first and then we'll move on to tequila. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your most challenging track apart from Monaco? Mm -hmm. Good question. It's really down to where you, where you are with the car, you know, because I, I found from my experience in the sport that although you don't like uh, certain tracks, you haven't done well, that sometimes with the car you are at, it's actually very good at it. At that one, so it's really where you are with the with the with the car and at which which stage, how you're feeling comfortable. But uh, if you're not feeling really comfortable with the car, let's say into a high speed circuit, then the worst place to go is Silverstone or Spa or stuff like that. So um, it can be pretty challenging, you know. But it's a circuit that I used to love, and uh, I really have had a great great success there. But um, yeah, it's just depends where, where you are at, yeah. uh, at the time. And what is your favorite tequila based cocktail? I uh, you just go straight tequila. You I seem to me like a straight tequila. I like it very plain, <laughs> you know, just with the uh, sparkling water. Oh. Um, yeah, I like it clean. Because I mean, there's a, there's a whole different way that us Brits do tequila. Yeah. I mean, uh, how do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, some, but sometimes they're too sweet. And, right. Uh, um, I feel like it loses the taste of the of the tequila. Okay, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> Do you have a favourite tequila-based cocktail, Hugh? I would just go for a margarita. Oh, fair yeah. enough, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. That's, that's fine, okay. It's okay. good, uh, margarita is good, <laughs> but very sweet. You cannot have that many because then the, the day after can be a bit difficult. Yeah. So I don't go for the, the tequila, but when we were in Mexico, there's Mezcal Negronis from a local restaurant and there. Pretty lethal and pretty good. Yeah. Actually, when when you go to Mexico, do you take him to the good local places? Yeah, they always. I always do a uh, team lunch. I take the whole team. Yeah. Because uh, you know exactly where you're going and what you're doing. Yeah. For for dinner, um, but no no alcohol allowed. Yeah. Because it's very close to the race. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Wait until afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Question number two. Hi Checo. Hi you. This is Tom from Germany. And my question is, you guys work with different drivers and different race engineers before. Uh, what is it that makes your relationship so special? And what do you do on and off the track to improve it? Thanks for having me and good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers. That's a nice question. So what, what makes your relationship so special compared to working with anybody else? One, one of the good things about us is the age, that we are a very similar age. Mm. Um, and, and, and Hugh, you know, uh, you could see that uh, hasn't been in the job as a race engineer for many, many years. So it's, I'm like his first driver uh, as, as a race engineer. But uh, I think the, the good thing about it is, is the age and um, the synchrony that we have in, in our lives uh, out of the sport. Uh, and I think one, one of the good things about us is that we, we tend to have like a very bad day. Uh, let's say a bad quality where everything is against us and, and we can, I mean, most people I've known like will go down really deeply and uh, probably still like couldn't be thinking about what's next, you know, which is race day. And I've, we, I've seen it before with you, like we have a bad day and, and we learn from it, but like, straight away we are already thinking how we're going to come out of it, you know, and, and uh, that's something great to have in, in our relationship because yeah. it's like we never lose faith in each other you know like we we're here together and, and we're always looking 
forward to the next target. And I think that's something that makes us very bulletproof, you know, because we've had some tough times in our history of three years, but we always somehow managed to get out of it um, and uh, and with a lot of success. So I think it's some sort of uh, good dynamic in that yeah. regard. Is there anything you want to yeah. add to that? Yeah, it's a journey we're, we're going on together and invariably there will be challenging moments. Um, but yeah, I'm always amazed. We'll have a, a bad session and then you come bouncing back in the next day and it really just feeds that energy. Then I see you up for the race. Yeah, I'm up for it as well. Let's go and, and push on and yeah, so go and enjoy the journey. It's trust, I guess, isn't it? That you can trust in each other. Yeah, certainly, you know, because uh, it will be very easy to blame each other, you know, yeah. and uh, and just uh, put the blame on him or him on me. But we, we're we here as a team and I think we have a very strong team. Um, with Woody, Jeff, uh, I know, uh, um, like, we have that passion of, uh, okay, if we didn't have a good day or we didn't perform to our best. Uh, um, we probably didn't get the maximum of my driving or from the setup or from whatever, but we have a new opportunity tomorrow, so yeah. we just go for it. So we've got some more questions here uh, that's coming on social media via HP Poly. Uh, this is from Iv in Mexico. Is there a race that you watched as a child that made you fall in love with racing? If so, what was it? Mm, I remember my first ever race that I watched was uh, with my dad. Uh, and, and that was when Ayrton had his, his big accident. It was quite shocking you know, when, when that happened. Um, and I still remember that day, you know, we were a massive, my dad was a massive Ayrton uh, fan. And uh, yeah, when that happened, that was quite like a strange day yeah. for the family. And yeah, it's when I actually fall in love with the sport. Uh, it's a bit strange, but uh, it's when that happened. Is there anything in particular that, that made you want to get into, into Formula One? Is there any particular race that you watched or something that kind of caught your eye when you were younger? To yeah. End I'd, up working at Red Bull, you know? Well, I was always watching Formula One yeah. uh, with the family. Sunday afternoons, more often than not, Dad would have a little snooze uh, and I would be watching it. Uh, I think it was really then going to British Touring Cars at Brands Hatch when experiencing motorsport firsthand, getting the, the smell, the, the sound, it really the visceral feeling of it all that really set me on that path to then go and work in, in motorsport and ultimately Formula One. Okay, this is from Nash in Mexico. He says, um, what is your last thought before the clock hits the last second prior to the start of a race? So do you have like a mantra or do you think of your kids or is it something funny that pops into your head to kind of relieve the stress? Is that when, when uh, the, la the last light comes yeah, so before, for the race start? Before the lights go out, what's going through? Oh, you're just thinking to, to, to be on the, to do your, your procedures right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to have the best possible reaction to just to go for it and gain some places or, or maintain the position if you're on pole. Um, yeah, you when you're driving or when you are in the car, especially in those moments, you forget that you are that, that you are, uh, that you have family, you know, you forget about any, anything. Uh, this is from Sienna in California. Uh, since being teammates, what's the one piece of advice that you have learnt from each other? Is there anything that you've learnt from each other from working together over the last three years? I'll say to to stay cool in in the tough moments, you know. With Hugh, he normally it's like a, like a machine, you know. Like um, doesn't matter if it's all gone really bad or really good. It's like just staying uh, plain, you know. Um, don't show so much emotions in in that regard. I'll probably say the opposite. That for me, <laughs> <laughs> there is a time and a place for a bit of passion okay. uh, and to celebrate the successes. <laughs> Uh, this is from Worsty, who says, since none of us will ever drive a, an F1 car, what would be the one piece of advice that you would give us so that we can go faster in a go-kart? Just press the right throttle, the right uh, pedal. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Just hope for the best. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Solid advice. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. will work. <laughs> Hopefully. You'll go faster. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Somewhere. Right. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, 
Um, this is from uh, Alicia in Texas, who says, in your opinion, what personality trait or quality does a successful driver have that sets them apart from the rest of the pack? So is there anything that you would say that's about you that makes you different from everyone else on the grid? Mm, I think we are all different and we all have to, I think it's good that, to be yourself because when you come to Formula One, a lot of teams, a lot of media, a lot of pressure on you and, mm. and everyone wants you to be some way, you know, but staying loyal, loyal to yourself to to do what you feel is best for, for you. I think that's the biggest thing you can have, you know, and, and doesn't matter if you're very successful or not, you, you at least you are yourself. And uh, that's very important to keep, you know, um, don't change because they, they tell you that this is the way it will work for you. Uh, at the end of the day, we all know what's the best way for us. Mm. And, and you only learn through the years and through experience to, to, to stay yourself. And uh, that's the biggest thing I'll say. Yeah, would you say like when you started racing, it's quite easy to get lost in yeah. what's expected of you rather than just being you and going on your own journey? Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of time. And even in Formula One through the years that... Uh, like I say, a lot of people, a lot of teams, a lot of uh, um, surrounding, um, they think that this is the only way you can be successful, you know? Mm. Uh, but there are a lot of other ways that you can be successful. Uh, and I think, obviously, learning from yourself, improving yourself, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day it's very important that you stay yourself uh, through your career. That's nice, I like that. Um, this is from uh, Jay Jesus, who says, with the increasing emphasis on data analysis and simulation, how do you find the right balance between relying on data and trusting your instincts? I mean, I guess when it comes to data, that's where you would come in and you would say, you need to take this corner in this particular way. But then you're the guy on the track who's yeah. like, no, I know I want to take this corner this way. How do you know which way to lean? Well, that's uh, a major part of my job, trying to find that balance. Mm. So it does start with Checo's subjective feedback, and that's guiding what we're doing, where we're going with the setup. But then I'm trying to marry that up with, uh, with the data. And if I can explain why the balance in term five was like this, the previous corner, something else had happened, and, or there was a gust of wind, and maybe that's corrupted some of his feedback, then maybe trust more of the data and... Um, if it reinforces what Checo's saying, then it's all a bit of a challenge to find find the balance between between the two. I mean, there must have been a few moments where where Hugh said to you, "You should take take this like this," and you go, "Uh, no." <laughs> yeah, a lot of times, uh, you know, because at the end of the day, you are in the car and, yeah. and you are trying to explain how how you're feeling it, you know. But he can see other things, like he just explained. Mm. So yeah, it's always finding that compromise. Yeah, fair enough. Did you study um, at university to then sort of end up in as a race engineer? I study a sort of general engineering degree. Right. Nothing particularly motorsport related, or well, nothing at all motorsport related. Um, and then it's been, well, I'm now 11 years at, at Red Bull, um, so learning did you just my trade. So apply for a job at Red Bull and then just kind of worked your way up to becoming race engineer? Yeah, so my final year at, at uni, I, I applied for a job working in uh, the vehicle dynamics group yeah. developing suspension did that for two and a half three years moved into the simulator did that for two and a half three years um when there happened to be tire testing going on so got quite a lot of trackside experience at mm -hmm. that time and then yeah moved into the performance engineer role on max's car uh, and then the race engineer role. Because there'll be a lot of people that are listening to this podcast that would wonder how to get into working in Formula One without having to start as a driver from the age of five, you know. So I, I think if they want to work in engineering, it's quite nice to find yeah. out where race engineers have started to then build your way back up to where you are. Yeah, it's not a, a skill set you learn at university. Um, for us, it's having the academic skill set mm. uh, and then you learn the, the specifics uh, you learn about an F1 car when you're you're here yeah. uh, working with the team. And before we move on to the to the HP Poly Challenge, how are you both feeling about Vegas? 
because the build up to Vegas right now is huge, right? I mean, it's everywhere you, you look up on social media about F1, about the races and stuff. Vegas is just like this huge thing that's approaching. I mean, it's not just going to be an awesome race, but it seems like the atmosphere is going to be bonkers, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds insane, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I How think do you feel about it? I think it's going to be the biggest event of the in the sports in the world, you know, because, yeah. I just think it's going to be huge, the, the event and, and Vegas, you know. I've been I've been a lot of time to Vegas with friends and, um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, Can't it's tell a, stories. Yeah, it's a, great, it's a great place, you know, to... It's a great combination also to have the sport with, with Vegas, um yeah i think if if we have a good race uh there it's it's one of those races that you really want to do well yeah yeah uh, so that, that's quite hard to sort of train with because i know at the moment we're chatting to you while you're in the middle of doing a lot of uh sim stuff so you've uh, i'm guessing you've been driving a lot of that on on the sim to try and do the the vegas track because no one's properly driven it yet that's yet to come so right. in uh yeah six weeks or so time we'll we'll be back in and we'll do a dedicated Vegas gotcha. prep session. Oh, and no pressure, but apparently it's Christian Horner's 50th birthday while you're out in Vegas. So, because he, no he mentioned it on this podcast. <laughs> so he's like, oh, I'm out there for my 50th. So uh, maybe get him a nice present, something like that. It's a street yeah. circuit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So on this podcast, we also have the HP Poly Challenge. They're our, our sponsors of the podcast. They are the leaders in video and voice. So uh, we've done a few different versions of this challenge. What I need you to do is pop in your Poly in-ears. So just pop them. They are fresh ones. Oh, okay. they, yes, please. And what you will hear um, are three Formula One tracks. And I need you to work as a team to see if you can guess the three tracks. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Monaco? Which one? I was thinking Budapest. But there were a lot of straights. Yeah, it was a reasonable drag to turn one. Yeah. Then you it's quite slow with a turn one. Yeah. Did wonder whether it was Baku, but starting not on the start finish line. On the on the line. The control line. But it wasn't that long, no? The, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think the RPM was quite high. No. Enough. Um I no can Jeddah. tell you as a clue, you have already raced it this year. No Jeddah. Uh, no Melbourne. Um, no Miami. No Miami. No. So it must be Hungary? I would have said Hungary. Yeah. You're going Hungary? Yeah. Final answer? That's wrong. Uh, <laughs> which, which track was it? Baku. <laughs> I should Swimming. always, I should always <laughs> stick to what I believe. You know, you see, it wasn't a long enough drag to tell. You both got to a point where where you were discussing it, and I was like, oh, yeah. maybe. We, we just doubted too much. Yeah. I don't think the clip started on the control line. It must have started. Yeah, yeah and the, the curving. I mean, it was yeah. an obvious one. Okay, right. <laughs> clip number two. You ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I thought it was Bahrain until that last last corner. No, it was quite fast. Uh, it was a quite fast turning one. Do you want a clue on this one? Yeah. You haven't raced this one yet. Not not this year. You're both taking this really seriously, and I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very serious um, game. <laughs> not Singapore. Not Japan. Not Austin. Not Mexico. Could be Mexico. It's Mexico. Two. It's yeah. the correct answer. <laughs> the moment that just triggered in your head was, yeah. it's not Mexico. <gasps> yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well done. Okay, so last one. Let's see how you do. Because you've only got one right so far. So let's see if you can get the final one right. Here we go. Yeah. This is the last one.
I think this one's on you. Oh, Sorry? really? Oh, OK, no what, pressure. What yeah. did you say? It's on you. I, I got lost after about three apexes. So, you know, it has a, it, it's very similar to Monza. You activate DRS on the main straight. You have quite a bit, it's quite a bit slow. Mm, Jeddah? Oh, 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 nailed it. Yes, it's just. <laughs> I was just about to say I'm not giving you any clues on yeah. this one, but you absolutely got it. Well yeah. done, well, well done. done. So you got two out of three. That was good. We that should have good. got the three, but yeah, never mind. Never mind. Is that the concentration face that he makes while you're driving on the simulator? It was just this real concentration face <laughs> you had going on. <laughs> But I want to say thank you so much uh, for joining me because I know you're going straight back to the sim to go and have another full sim session. Yeah. When you do a sim session, how long do you normally have a go on one track? How normally do you, how long do you normally spend? Normally do two, two and a half hours on the track, that sort yeah. of time. Um, so like you did one track this morning, you'll do another track this afternoon kind of mm -hmm. thing? Yeah, we'll work through 10, 15 setup items, development items and... Yeah. Well, thank you very much for, for joining me here on Talking Ball. It's been fabulous chatting to you. Enjoy race weekend this weekend and we'll see you again next time.